Welcome to Six Figure Authors, the show that helps you take your writing career to the next level. I'm Joe Lalo, and I'm here with my two co-hosts. I'm Andrea Pearson. And I'm Lindsay Baroker. And uh, Andrea and Lindsay are both uh, feeling poorly this week, uh, so we're going to be doing a short episode. Uh, you could probably tell things have gone wrong when I'm the one doing the intro. Uh, we're going to just answer a couple of questions that might be of interest to you. Um, but before we get started on the main topic, does anybody have any news? I would just say that after two years of successfully avoiding the COVID germs, I have officially tested for it. So I'm actually doing fine. It's like a deep chesty cold, but um, you can probably hear in my voice a little bit. This is after a week. My voice has actually improved much. So, uh, and I think Andrew is kind of in the same boat with her cough and voice. So uh, we will attempt to put something useful out for you in 15 to 20 minutes. <laughs> As for me, um... I have some small amount of news, but it's sort of the answer to our first question. So I'll, I'll just do it at that step. Um, so I guess we'll just move on uh, to the questions. What is your next project and what will you do for the launch? That's um, my, my, what my answer was going to be too. I'm just going to talk at, in the first question and not actually give official news because, you know, anyway, um, so my next project is called Dr. Lincoln. It is the third in my medical romance series. And um, I've, I'm about a quarter of the way through writing it. Uh, getting sick this last week really derailed me, but doing about 5,000 words a day when I'm able to write. So that's pretty exciting. Um, anyway, so it's called Dr. Lincoln and it's a medical romance, like I said, and, and I'm I've been going back and forth on what I want to do for the launch. I know I'm going to try Facebook ads, but with how Facebook ads are going for everybody right now, I don't know. And for those who don't, I mean, you can go to the Facebook group. People have been talking about it quite a bit there, but Facebook, and I think we have mentioned on the show before, but with Apple's update to their, their um, privacy thing in the beginning of last year, uh, Facebook ads, just like they've kind of gotten not so good. And um Anyway, sorry, I'm my brain's not connected because the illness. Uh, anyway, so I'm kind of hesitant. I haven't tried Facebook ads yet for my medical romances, but it's wh what I know best. And so I want this launch to go well. And so I don't know, I'm trying to decide if I want to put anything into Facebook ads. And those of you who are still having Facebook ads work for you, please uh, comment in the Facebook group and let me know so that it's not just doom and gloom because all I'm hearing right now are doom and gloom. <laughs> so um, I know I'll probably do um, newsletter swaps of some sort. I'm still doing, um, still handling swaps for my last promotion, which was in November. Um, this book will probably get released the end of February, I'm, I'm guessing, um, and or possibly sooner than that. And so I'll, I'm going to do some newsletter swaps. I am going to see if I can do those Facebook ads. Uh, definitely hit up my newsletter list a couple of times. I'm going to go back to what I used to do, which was share quotes from readers, you know, like the enthusiastic, cheerful quotes. Um, I'm also going to be running a giveaway during that time where it's going to be, um, I want the winner to pick the uh, one of the main characters, either the guy or the girl, the first name for the next book that I'll be writing. And since I already know the next book's last name is going to be Nelson, because that's the next doctor who's going to get married um, or get hitched or get in whatever they do in romances, <laughs> get fall, fall together. No, fall in love, <laughs> get together. Anyway, so I'm going to run a giveaway for that. And, um, and then have somebody, you know, whoever wins, they get to have, they get to pick the main character's name. And um, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it, I think, for, for what I'm going to do. I'm sure I'll think of other stuff, and then I'll let everybody know as we get closer to that launch date. As for me, uh, my very next project, uh, which is currently occurring, is uh, the release of the Volume 2 collections of my three main series. I concluded all of them last year. Um, actually, I think the year before. <laughs> and uh uh and now I've, it's I've been a year since they all have have uh, have had their final entry released which means i feel as though it's about long enough for me to be releasing uh, a box set that includes those most recent releases uh so the first one is the is volume two of the book of deacon series uh, uh collection and it's going to be launching on february 3rd so just to, you know by the time you hear this uh very shortly um, I was able to get a book bub for the first box set, and that'll be going out on February 7th. So shortly after the launch, I'll hopefully get a nice big bump off of that. Plus the usual newsletter, social media stuff, uh, 
to you know around the actual launch day so that i'll have a small you know my biggest punch will be my newsletter and then some social media and then a couple of days later the gigantic punch of uh of bookbub and that's about it what i'm gonna be doing for that and i will hopefully i can't trust the bookbub portion of it but hopefully i'll be doing similarly for the other box sets which will be releasing at roughly two month intervals over the course of well yeah two or three month intervals over the course of this year my next like book project i mean i, I book four of the of the greater land saga my my new epic fantasy is going to be releasing but once you're up to book four launches are kind of you know not much you can't really do a huge launch on a book four or five six so those aren't i can't say i'm going to have any special it'll probably be minus the book bub very similar to uh to what i'm doing for the the collections where i'm going to push the first one a little bit harder maybe do a price discount when i release the sixth one so they have a nice big thing all the way through uh that sixth one will be coming out at the end of this year if i keep to my schedule um and as for the next like from scratch project i don't really have it planned out i have a couple of lingering books uh, even though i say I conclude the book of deacon series i have a side story and a prequel that were written a long time ago and never released because they i had learned the hard way that interrupting the release of the main thread was uh, a good way to lose readers so i sat them aside and they still are finished and ready to go so i'll probably release them but again those are side stories and prequels to a pre like hard to launch those except that i can make them sort of an event because it'll, it will have been so long since a new book came out in that series um and i don't know what the next big project will be the next like new project so uh can't answer that one but so those are those are the various launches that i have set up in the in the coming year so it sounds like for both of you, the next new book you're writing and releasing is sort of like the third or fourth in an ongoing series. Um, so I'm curious, Andrea, you mentioned Facebook ads. Are you, because you're doing romances and I assume they all stand alone, are you going to like advertise book three or are you going to like put out book three and launch it to your newsletter socials, but then advertise book one and do a sale and that kind of thing? Definitely going to advertise book three. Um, it's, yeah, like you said, it's a standalone. Uh, the cover, I think, is one of the strongest covers I've got in the series, which, by the way, I did redo all my covers last week, because what else are you going to do when you're sick? <laughs> I couldn't write. So um, anyway, so it's a strong book cover for clean and wholesome romance, that category. And it's a standalone. And um, I figure, you know, why not do what other romance authors do <laughs> and see if I can get this launch itself to do well compared to, and then, I mean, it'll trickle back to all the other books in the series right so yeah i was just curious because i've almost never written a series where each book could stand alone because i usually do the sci-fi fantasy stuff um but yeah and i i'm kind of you're kind of stuck like i can't really advertise book three because i don't want people <laughs> to try to jump into book three and start there but do you find that when you advertise uh, book three is it we're, we're actually going to have a question about advertising but is it worth it um is it can you break even um, if they don't like go back and read the other books? Um, you know, I, I would say it would depend on how good my ads are. So like if I can get, if I can turn a profit, it'll be launched at full price. So I think, I think for, you know, somebody who's well-established in the career, in the author market or whatever, I think obviously you can, uh, in my case, since it's only the third book that I've written for romance, I don't know that I'll break even right away. Um, I think it'll probably be more of a trickle thing. So. All right, just curious. And Joe, I hope that the box sets go well is like a good way to, I always love making money on like old books <laughs> as all authors should like it, but it seems especially satisfying when something you finished years ago, like figuring out a way like, oh, can I do a new complete series box set or, or like the two volumes? And um, hopefully, are you gonna do like 99 cents or something for the first uh, volume of the box sets? Yep. Uh, for, for like the book bub is is for the uh, the the discount. I'm discounting it from seven ninety nine to ninety nine cents, and it's going to be for at least a month. But it might just be the new price, depending on how well it does at that price. And I'll probably do the same for the others. At least discount it for a month to ninety nine cents, and possibly just reset the price to ninety nine cents if it seems financially sustainable. All right, sounds good um, for myself to answer the question of what's next and what will I do for the launch. I'm actually working on a high fantasy romance that has absolutely nothing to do with anything else I've written. It was just a story that the muse wanted to do as a break from my two ongoing series. And but that does leave me pondering what to do with the launch, because 
and we're going to talk about this in the next question where we talk more on advertising. It's hard to justify spending thousands of dollars on advertising when there won't be a series after it. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, I am developing it in such a way that I could write more eventually, but I have to get back to the other series. So I won't be doing that for a while. Um, so it's hard to justify the cost of like pay-per-click ads. You can blow through hundreds a day easily on Amazon ads and you know, I know we've talked to people who do Facebook ads and can spend thousands of dollars a day, but when it's only like one three ninety nine dollars ebook, that's a bit iffy. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking of just throwing it out there with a minimal launch, basically to my newsletter and the social media sites and not really doing anything else and, and seeing how it does. You know, I might book something with like e-reader news today or, or new in books, which allow you to do new releases that don't have reviews yet. But I have noticed in the past that with the sponsorship sites, if you're not doing a 99 cent book release, you know, they don't really get the traction because those are kind of maybe not so much new in, new in books is not necessarily a bargain books thing. But on um, like when I had like the BookBub new release thing, um, I didn't do well with the one that wasn't 99 cents. It just seems like those sites are the readers that are signed up are really into the bargain stuff. So that makes it tough when you're doing a full price new release that's not just a, a book continuing on in your series. So I, I'm kind of thinking of maybe for the pricing, maybe doing $2.99 the first week or two just to, you know, reward my regular readers and maybe help things get going and gain some traction. Um, I do have other series, like I said, that are more my focus. So it's okay if it doesn't do great but i of course i always hope with everything like oh maybe i can bring in some new readers and at this point i have a, a large backlist of other series for them to check out if they uh want to do want to do so so we'll see um right now the plan is just no ads and kind of see I'm, I'm curious it's been a long time since i've launched something new without also spending a good chunk on ads so i'm curious i mean i know it'll break even and do fine based on my fan base and, and the readers that will just are very kind and will pick up anything that I put out. Um, but we'll see. I, I may wuss out and run ads for a week or two just to like, you know, it's so hard when just watching the, oh, you get like a nice rise in the sales ranking when you send it out to your newsletter and oh, it's in the top 100 of your, you know, subgenre, hopefully. And then, you know, the, the inevitable <clears throat> watching it slowly drop, drop into obscurity like it happens to the best of us, especially if you don't run ads. So I, I'm curious what you guys think. Like if you were just doing a one off book right now that, you know, maybe you'll do some more in another year or something, but there's not going to be any other income from it for a while. Would you spend money on ads or would you just kind of do what I'm thinking and just put it out there to your fans? Uh, I did just do this top level player was a standalone with no clear uh, plans for the future. Plus it was kind of an oddball book. So I did not feel as though putting a ton of money into advertising, it was going to pay off. So I, I did a pretty minimal release and uh, more, moreover, it was, a, it was previously released in Patreon. So I had sort of already broken even on it. So I was, I, I went very, very slim. I, I don't even think, I think I boosted the post on, on the Facebook page and that's it. I'm typing something inside of the chat right now. I'm just going to tell you, let me know if we, if I have internet issues because we tweak things and it's working all over the house, but the podcast seems to be a special pig. So it's pig. <laughs> it's a special case. Uh, no, I honestly probably wouldn't do a lot of advertising on a one-off book. Just, I mean, most of the books I've written have been one-off books. So, and like, you know, the books that I wrote for the local elementary school, I knew writing them, they wouldn't make a lot of money. And so throwing ads at it or any sort of money at it beyond, I mean, I did the book covers myself, you know, and um, I did, yeah, like there, we didn't put a whole lot of money into those. And I just, I don't know, I wouldn't do it personally, but yeah. All right. Well, I'll keep everybody updated. I'm sure you'll be on the edge of your seat wondering how it's going to go for me. And um, Joe, do you want to move us on to the next question? Sure. The next question is, when do you think it's worth spending money on advertising your books? I feel like this is a great lead in from advertising to more advertising. <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm going to be, and I'm sick right now, so I'm going to be a little blunt and a little cranky, but honestly, to me, advertising it's whenever you feel like you're it's worth losing money because every advertisement you do is going to have the the chance to lose money for you um but then you're learning from that you're applying for your next promotion um not every advertisement like i said earns money but if you're doing things smartly even 
uh, every single one of them is a great opportunity to learn what your readers want and what to do and not to do for your next promotion. Uh, with my new romances, uh, I've done two small promotions now. One of them was like back in May or something like that. And the other one was in November. Each of them paid for themselves, even though I didn't have very much for them to go on and read through after that. Uh, and that with that excess cash, I was able to put it aside for the next promotion. So the little promotion I did in May, I got like you know hundred dollars from that or something like that. Thank goodness I still have fantasy books, right? Uh, and I put that towards the next promotion that happened in November. And I didn't spend like the fantasy is keeping the fantasy side of the business alive. So like my fa ex excess fantasy money, money has gone to like my website overhaul and just keeping my Facebook ads for my fantasy side working, which they are still working. So maybe I just need to be more confident about Facebook ads. Um, anyway, um, <clears throat> so again, that, so I take that cash from the romance books, I put it towards the romance books. And then um, each of those promotions has helped me gain reviews. Like I haven't done a push for reviews on my books at all. And I'm very pleased with how they're doing. Um, so even if you don't make a whole lot of money, it's still valuable to run advertisements. And that could be, you know, like promotional websites or, or Facebook ads or Amazon ads or whatever. Um, but also I think it's definitely worth throwing a chunk of cash at, at a book that is proven. And by chunk, I mean a lot of money. So if the cover and description are spot on and you've tested them out and have had positive results, uh, advertising is a great idea, even large amounts of money, because you you ha you know that that book is going to do well if you put money into it. Um, just make sure if you do do that, that you have a solid you have solid back matter that leads readers to, to your newsletter list and to your freebie um, and all of that. Just so that anything you're doing, even if you only have one book or twenty book, anything you're doing is directing readers to uh, become subscribers. Um, as for me. Uh... I have to roll back because I moved forward in the thing for some reason. Okay, as for me, a specific answer to this question is hard to settle on without knowing what sort of click through you're going to get and how, what your cost per click is going to get and based upon your, mat, your, your skills and your genre. Um, they're not terribly useful, but undeniably accurate answer is you, it's worth advertising when your sell through will produce more in royalties than the average cost per click of the advertising. Like that is the actual metric. Uh, if you can earn more than you spend, then you're, you're good to go. Uh, but what does that mean? Uh, lacking that information, which is extremely volatile anyway, that can change from month to month or, or day to day, depending on the whims of the, uh, the genre. Um, I'd say ongoing ads aren't worth running on a catalog that has less than around $8 of sell through. <laughs> that is the thumb, thumb, uh, rule of thumb that I use. Uh, if you have one book that will fetch you $8 in royalties, then you can probably advertise that comfortably and, and make a, a profit. If you have three books, then on average, the purchase of the first one will get you eight bucks overall. Then again, chances are you're gonna be able to advertise that pretty comfortably uh, as long as you've got some base level of skill. Uh, outside of that, if, if that is not the case, uh, some advertising is still not a bad idea, like you, you getting, we just mentioned what we do during launches, uh, it's, it, there is value to getting your book visible around launch week, uh, just because your visibility is hard to attain without uh, any advertising. So $20 or so, however you want to slice it up, uh, is basically the bare minimum uh, of, of what you would call advertising, like do a boosted post or, or, or one featured thing. Uh, but yeah, you don't want to spend, I, I wouldn't want to spend more than a hundred bucks on something that didn't fit the criteria I just listed. So uh, yeah, that's, that's what I got to say on that topic. All right. Well, for myself, I, I like to do it when on a, a series with quite a few books out or when I'm launching a new series, especially if I know I'm going to kind of quickly be putting more books out into it you know, it's always great if you can get the momentum going right at the launch of a new series and get a lot of sales of book one. It's, it helps down the road, of course, and not only because you get more readers into the series, but it's just if you're able to sell a lot in those opening weeks, sometimes the book gets kind of sticky and you get a lot of organic sales in addition to it. But I will say, it's sometimes you need to just kind of turn off the ads and see if how much they're actually helping. And that can be a little scary to do if you've like been super relying on ads for quite a while. And, you know, you're afraid you're going to, 
like if you turn them off and then turn them back on a few days later, you'll probably be able to recover, but it's always harder to get a book selling well again once it's sort of dropped off the cliff, at least on Amazon. You know, we don't have as many advertising options for the other stores, so I don't know quite, you know, as well on there. Andrea does more with the Facebook stuff uh, and possibly targeting other stores than I do. Um, but so that's kind of that. I, I did think it was interesting that about a month ago when I released my fourth Epic Fantasy, I dropped the ad spend on book one by 50% just because I'm advertising three series right now because they're, they're all either, it's either a long series that's still in KU. All three of these series are in KU. And I will say that that uh, as far as Amazon ads go, it makes it a lot easier to recoup your money if you're getting the page reads income too, but I had three series going and I just kind of blew through a whole bunch of money in November and December because it was the end of the year. And I was like, oh, my gross income is like quite high this year. So, I was like, you know, it's not like you're wasting money necessarily on ads, but I, I let it spend a lot more than I normally would have because I was like, okay, need some tax write-offs for uh, 2021, which is, of course, a, a good position to be in. But uh, at the beginning of the new year, I was like, all right, let's let's trim back a little bit. And yeah, I, so I dropped the ad spend on book one of the Epic Fantasy by 50%. And um, I want to keep it going because I still have two more books coming out in that series, but it, it has not made a difference <laughs> in the, like, the average daily income on that book. So it's kind of like, okay, hmm, that's a book that's been out for nine months now. I don't know, uh, I might just turn off the ads completely on that until I release the next one because it, it seemed to it has some momentum and it's selling to a, at a certain level, uh, whether the ads are there or not, it seems like. Um, but to answer the question, I think, um, when is it worth spending money? I already said when you have a bigger series, it makes more sense because it's obviously the sell through. And like Joe was talking about, if you can make $10, $20 on the sell through, you can afford to spend more on advertising book one. But it's probably always worth buying some sponsored posts and, and just do so you have a little more ammo to fire at your release week to kind of get try to get a staggered sales every day instead of just relying only on your newsletter. Of course, another option is if you do newsletter swaps with other authors, then you can kind of get a boost from that too. Although I really don't know that when I've done that in the past that I, I got so many sales from those other authors that it was really a noticeable, you know, like jump in the number of sales that day. Like I'd rather, I just rely on advertising now. That's, that's more my thing as, as an introvert and someone who also doesn't email my newsletter that often but um yeah so if you can get like e-reader news today uh you know some of the sites uh, new in books i mentioned um the book bub does the new release alerts if you qualify for one uh so some of those are expensive both those two are over two or three or four hundred dollars i think so be careful like what i talked about before if you're releasing your new release at like 4.99 or, or full price it might not sell well enough to be worth it and on the flip side, if you're releasing it at 99 cents, you might not sell enough copies to cover it either. So you just kind of have to think about like, this is the budget I have for the, the release and how much do I want to spend on sponsored posts versus the pay-per-click ads, which may perform better, but you tend to spend, I find, I tend to spend more money on any time I'm paying per clicks versus it's going out to a newsletter uh, to thousands of readers. Uh, that tends to be a better deal for me. Um, but I would be hesitant to spend money on pay-per-click stuff on a solo book, like I was just talking about, or one that's um, first in the series and the others aren't coming out for a while, especially if you're not even able to get the pre-order up and start, you know, collecting cer certain sales. Um, at least with fiction, it's really tough to make the pay-per-click ads work on only one book that's at $3.99 or $4.99 or whatever. It may be different for nonfiction, you know, if you've got like a $9.99 ebook, or if you're one of those fiction people that <laughs> sells your book for $9.99. Um, but even then, you probably want some other products that you can direct readers to. It's pretty common to see only like one in 10 clicks convert to a sale or a KU borrow. Uh, and if you're paying 50 cents a click, you can see how the math fails to work out for one book that you're selling for four or five dollars. Um, so yeah, if you're only doing one book, you may want to, you know, focus on some other things rather than doing the pay-per-click ads, uh, such as giving like an, giving away a tie-in short story uh, with an excerpt for the novel in the back of the book. You know, engaging in, in some of those multi-author promotions that are out there with other authors, where you're all giving away free stuff and um, sharing each other's mailing list kind of things. But well, you know, that's, I guess, the, the more budget way to um, launch a book. <laughs> and a lot, what a lot of, you know, and it still works. Um, ads are really, have gotten really expensive. So until you're actually making pretty good money, it's hard to kind of get in there and 
spend enough on ads to actually move the dial in a substantial way and get kind of the organic sales. Like you may be able to get, you know, man manually get, you know, spend the money on the 10 clicks and get one sale. But if you're not getting any sort of organic boost by starting to appear in also bots in the top 100s and stuff, it may be hard to ever feel like you're getting anywhere with the advertising. Um, but of course, experiment and, you know, do, <laughs> do what works for you, whatever you find, whether that's swearing it off or spending $10,000 a day on your next release. I don't know too many people doing that, although I'm sure there are some out there. All right, Joe, take it home. Our last question. All right. Final question for today's uh, little episode. What would you do if you could only write a book a year, but still hoped to make good money as an author? Um, okay, so honestly, this is me being me. Like, I know that a lot of our audience probably won't recognize or be this way, but um, I like nonfiction. And I think that um, I would honestly take a look at your skill set and see if you can or have the desire to have that one book be a nonfiction book, because there's so many ways to earn money if you write nonfiction. And advertising is much easier, the, like targeting the audience is a lot more obvious. Um, and then you could do like courses and things like that and have it basically sell itself. Um, and uh, newsletter lists all around that topic and everything. Um, if it's fiction though, because uh, I'm not really interested as much in nonfiction as I used to be. It's something I do about once a year now, but um, if it's fiction, I'd focus heavily on the craft side of things and make sure it's an absolutely phenomenal story that readers can't put down. Um, pick your genre wi wisely, recognizing that not all genres tolerate infrequent releases. And I would say um, the ones where traditional publishing is still heavily dominated, like, you know, mysteries and thrillers and things like that. And then having a higher price point, um, make sure the books are longer. So 80 to 90,000, even if it's a genre that would do well at 40 to 50,000. Um, but honestly, we've had Rachel Anderson on the show before, and she releases one, sometimes two, and sometimes no books a year. And she's still doing really well. Um, she focuses on book bub feature deals and targeting her current readers really solidly. Um, she used to write contemporary romance, but she found that historical romance was a better sell for her. So be willing to move within the genre you pick. Um, she also doesn't scrimp on book covers. The stock images that she uses are only available for her after she purchases them. And I know they cost several hundred dollars. Um, that's not necessary, but you're going to want to make sure everything about that book is going to sell it for you. So tropes that readers want, catchy descriptions that fit the genre, um, covers that are professional and fit the emotions in the book. So don't do bright and happy if the book is dark and angsty. Um, study what sells in the genre. Do a brief check once. Don't do a brief check once and then focus your efforts on what you saw then. Uh, trends change quickly. So instead, I would recommend you check out the best selling books regularly and make note of the styles that stick around and then go with something similar to that. Um, my advice would be, uh, I would, first off, I would certainly write in a series, uh, by the way, for a, a fairly large chunk of my most successful portion of my career, I was releasing about one book a year. And then even further into my career, I was releasing one book a year in each of my series. So if you were only a sci-fi or fantasy or steampunk fan, then you, I was essentially only releasing one book a year for you. But that's not quite the same because it was three. Anyhow, uh, definitely write in a series. Uh, I would plan that series out, at least in broad strokes, uh, in terms of a series arc as, as much in advance as I could. I would be three books out in terms of what I expected to happen in terms of the overall plot so that I could be peppering in uh, indications of you know foreshadowing and, and creating these little interesting plot threads that that uh, people would be interested in and leaving some of them unresolved at the end of every book so that the people like I gotta pick up the next one because so and so is still you know in the dungeon. I would be uh, trying to make sure that my characters in particular were incredibly solid. Um, so they would capture the information that you would actually care what's happening to them. I would probably separate those characters out so that I could, uh, it you know, focus on different characters in different books if, if the, uh, you know, the, if that's the way I chose to go. Um, I would probably have very long uh, pre-orders. I would try to get my cover uh, at least six months early and have six months of pre-order so that I would have it slowly accumulating uh, uh, purchases and just it would feel as though I it would feel as though I had twice as many releases because I have the pre-order announcement and then the actual release so both of those could be sort of treated uh, with with launch buzz 
um, I would uh, when you're when you're slower release schedule, you're you're focusing more on long tail than on your launch anyway. So again, long pre-order is useful for for that. Um, I would have a reader magnet that was free, and I would have a very cheap or free series starter once the series was at least two or three deep, because having a very cheap series starter at the beginning could possibly be a little difficult to get started financially. Um, although, again, uh, that's how I got started. I had a free series starter long before I was making money off of my books. So uh, I would put some effort into having at least a moderately active community. If I'm not going to be able to be you know, having regular releases, I want to have a, a regular conversation with my with my readers and whether that's on Facebook or on some other social media platform or via newsletter, although ideally you'd want it on some sort of a public platform so that the conversation would be an open one that people can see and join in on as opposed to just going back and forth between you and, and the uh, the reader uh, via newsletter. If you keep the conversation going and it keeps interest up, even when there hasn't been a book in a while or when there won't be uh, a book for a while and can build anticipation and stuff like that. And then I would also try to find, uh, well, every possible income stream from those books. Like if you're going to do Amazon exclusivity, also don't forget that you can still do, you know, paper, paperbacks are not covered in that. Make sure you have everything that you can monetize. You do audiobooks if you can afford it. Um, and I would also put some sort of a tip jar up in the form of a Patreon or something else. Even if you're not going to be doing regular Patreon content, make it very clear uh, that, that through some subscription service or another, hey, listen, if you want to keep the lights on in between book releases, if you just if you're that enthusiastic, uh, make it available. I, I probably wouldn't even push it. I would just mention it uh, because every little bit's going to help uh, in terms of keeping you afloat if things don't go great. Because again. One of the downsides of having these these once a release, you know, one release per year, not every release is going to be great. And uh, if you have a weak release and there's not going to be another one for 12 months, you're going to sort of need some way to make up the uh, the the, uh, the difference. So again, uh, as many incomes as possible. And uh, yeah, that's what I would do, and that's what I did do. All right. Well, I think that's a good point about uh, kind of crafting your series with a lot of intention beforehand and leaving stuff unresolved. And I think you can do this even if you're writing something like romance or cozy mysteries where uh, each one is a very complete story. You can still have some sort of like background of the character question mark that you're wondering about, like who killed his father, you know, that uh, you're still wondering about as the series goes on that isn't resolved until the end. And I will say that my most popular series as far as like fan fiction and fan art was my first series with a much slower release schedule than I do now. And it was very much like Joe was talking about, like it had a, <clears throat> a slow burn romance and just an overarching series with a lot of stuff left unresolved, even though for most of it, each book was a complete installment. And I believe all that really kept readers thinking about the series and kind of eagerly awaiting the next installment uh, when they weren't coming as quickly. Someone even set up a message board at one point to discuss the series. And this was like really before I had a very large fan base. It was just, um, I, I'm fortunate that that kind of, that series worked for people and captured them. And I actually think that the, having the releases farther apart is kind of what encouraged people to do those things because they had to wait six months or eight months or whatever it was for the next one. So they're doing their fan art, they're doing their fan fiction. And so if you, you know, if you're only doing one book a year, but you can write a series like that, that really keeps people like wanting to discuss it and wondering about what happens next in between each one. Um, obviously that's, <laughs> that's really gonna help. Um, I will say now as someone who's uh, fairly prolific, I have the luxury of sort of following the muse and writing what I want for the most part, or I guess more realistic to say that I write some books that are a little more commercial, you know, more maybe to market, although I've talked about how I'm not really that good at that. Um, but then mixing in and with fun stuff where I don't necessarily care if it's you know, what people are looking for. Um, but um, if I only had time to write one book a year and I really cared about it making money, I, I pull out Chris Fox's right to market book and research the categories, you know, the subgenres on Amazon that the kind of work within that paradigm of, you know, kind of a hungry audience, unmet demand, not too much competition. And, you know, out of all the categories that I could write in that I enjoyed and, and already knew about, hopefully, I would then 
you know, to kind of craft a series that seemed to be in line with what was selling and what was doing well. You do have to keep in mind that if you're only writing a book a year, you probably need to worry more about what the trend is when you launch the series and just accept that if that subgenre blows up and gets popular, it might be get, it might get harder as you go on and here come all the people that write a book a month, those jerks. <laughs> but if you crafted the series like Joe was talking about, or it, you know, people really got sucked in and it's the kind of thing they're telling other people to read, like you got to see, you know, find out what happens next. And it's really not going to matter who comes into the genre afterwards, but um, it can help you with that first book to, to get noticed if it's kind of a hungry audience and not too competitive of a genre, but there does have to be some readers in it. <laughs> you know, you don't want too obscure of a genre. Um, so that's just how I would do it. And I'm not saying you have to follow that route. Of course not. And maybe you find success just writing whatever the heck you want. Um, and I would stay focused on that series as much as the muse might want you to wander off and write other things. You know, if you really, if you're only putting out one book a year, I try to very be very consistent about, you know, putting out that book and maybe have it come out the same month every year so that people come to expect like, oh, it's June, you know, we're going to have a, a new book out by Joe. Awesome. Um, and also be thoughtful as far as picking the month you are going to release, like don't do holidays or like back to school months that are either crazy competitive because there are a lot of things releasing at that time from trad publishing or just that are, you know, we've talked about before, don't do like election months, you know, things where people are super distracted. Um, and I would also try to write some ancillary material, like free tie in short stories that I was talked about before where you could, um, Use some as a entice people onto your newsletter, you know, at the back of the book, I get the prequel short story that explains how X character, you know, that's super intriguing, gives their backstory. And then maybe you also eventually write a short story or a novella, whatever you have time for. That is um, another like it ties in to the, you know, it's, it's got the spirit of the novel and that uh, maybe introduces the banter and the main characters or something and then you put a little excerpt at the end of it and mention that people can buy the novel but you know maybe you do a promo you know a newsletter builder kind of thing with that and, and try to get more people to check out the book by giving away the free short stories maybe again depending on how much time you have uh, character interviews or fun little extra things that you could do on your blog that don't necessarily, you know, they're usually that stuff you can sit down and do at lunch or, you know, in a couple hours, but the fans tend to really enjoy those little extras. Um, so don't, don't diminish them in your mind just because they don't take that much time. Like it, it's the kind of thing that you can put up, maybe you do one a month. Um, and then, you know, and you can even schedule it like whenever Sunday is the day you have time, you schedule it and uh, have this short extra come out the first day of every month or whatever or the first monday of every month and like i said schedule it ahead of time so you're not pressuring yourself too much um but the last thing you want to do as tempting as it may be is completely disappear <laughs> between releases so if you're like putting up these little extras on your blog that also gives you something to mail your newsletter subscribers about and you know i if you can do a monthly newsletter, that would be great. You know, just point them to this little extra and this will help keep your books in their mind and keep them excited about the next release. And um, I wouldn't bother with paid advertising at all until you were a few years in and had a decent backlist. Again, for the reasons we discussed above, it's hard to make ads really, especially pay-per-click ads really work on when you only have one or two books out. But that is how I would like to think I would do it. I don't know if I'd actually be as perfect, you know, sometimes writing one of those series that really captures people's imagination, it's easier said than done, right? Like you can try to really hard to get all the things, but sometimes you'll find as you've written more series that some just kind of have more magic and chemistry between the characters and stuff. And no matter how hard you try, some other ones were just not quite as there. All right, I think I'm dying. The voice is dying and <laughs> I think I'm about done there. All right. Um... So do we have any other closing by Andrea, any closing thoughts on this? Um, <laughs> I'm not feeling well. So my first thought is I like turtles. <laughs> well, okay. She agrees with everything I said is what I, she meant to I say. Agree. I and agree we agree with everything with she her, says, of course. <laughs> and turtles are fun. Sure. <laughs> well, so all right fun. then. Um, thanks everyone for listening. Uh, you can find the show notes and leave a comment or a question at sixfigureauthors.com with the number six. And uh, that's about it. Bye, everyone. <laughs> See y'all later. So long, everybody. <laughs>